Uh, let's welcome Alfred Lau. He is a greater China property analyst at MF Global. Alfred, thanks for joining us. Well, what, are, you know, what did you, when you looked at these figures, what did you make of them? I think this sector is pretty much in line with our channel check with the property agents that we have been expecting uh, slowdown in major cities. Uh, if we go down the list from major cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and then down to some smaller cities, we can still see the trend that uh, major cities' property price has been stabilizing in the past few months. But the problem coming in is the small cities still have a big uh, price increase. So our view... Uh, I mean, there's still up. 69 out of 70 cities that the, are monitored showed an increase in prices. But this is a year-on-year -year figure, mm -hmm. but you're saying quarter-on-quarter. That's what we should be looking at. That's right. As, and even on a month-on-month -month basis, in, more importantly, is we are seeing a more stabilizing property prices in major cities. So that is the, uh, the impact from the previous uh, implant, in, implemented measures that are taking effect. So I think that for major cities, the measures are pretty much enough. So the problem is how much further tightening we need for small cities. Do we need any more, do you think? Uh, we do. We do expect more policy, particularly for the uh, purchase limit. Now we only have 40 cities in place, and uh, a lot of them only have tightening in the core uh, urban area. That we expect uh, the, this uh, such purchase limit, or some may say purchase restriction, will may, may roll out to other smaller cities because price there has been quite out of control, rising by more than 15 or some 20 percent uh, this year already. What about transactions here as well? The number of sales, I mm. mean, that's what the, the government's been trying to also target. Mm. Uh, what are we seeing on that front? I think transaction volume will uh, definitely come down because uh, if we look at the principle of this uh, purchase restriction, uh, they try to squeeze out all these investors or speculators. They only encourage uh, domestic people that have household registration to buy. And then uh, these people tend to be more uh, general end users, they are more price sensitive, uh, so they may uh, be more cautious and hesitate. So this will de delay the transaction volume further. Yeah, now tell me about actually property stock as well there in China. A lot of people talk about millions of flats being empty and uh, this got to be, have an impact at some point because people will go, hang on a second, I, I need to realize my mm -hmm. asset is not doing anything, it's not even getting me rent. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, this kind of kind of what we say empty houses has been in in in, in, the, in our country for quite some time, because uh, rental yield is still low in in, in China. Yeah. We're talking about only two. Uh, what do you think? You'd rather just get that than leave it empty. Uh, well, because uh, I guess people are still positive on the property price for more longer term. And the second thing is uh, again yeah, with that. But is that inventory building still? Yes, that's. Uh, but yes. it's got to have an impact, hasn't it? Uh, that's right, that's right. We, we believe that will hit into property prices more for the next, next year. We will continue to see a soft thing prices. Right. Because a lot of cities we are seeing close to one year inventory right now. And at, at some point, when developers now are seeing increasing marginal financing costs, uh, they need to dump some of their inventory. Yeah, that's the thing, than, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you got to then, when you choose to pick some of these developers, some of these property companies, you've got to pick the ones which I guess have got, you know, the, the better balance sheet, which obviously makes sense because you're not going to buy a company with a bad balance sheet. But uh, tell me about this. So who do you like currently? I think our, our, our favorite is still Agile Properties. Uh, as you said, we like the company with best balance sheet and also with uh, smallest outstanding land premium. Yeah. Because as a developer, Purely construction itself will not kill the developer mm. because developers tend to have larger control on construction pace. The, the only problem will be outstanding land premium and bank borrowings. The good thing this time is a lot of bank loan will only be outstanding in two or three years' time away from now. So the bigger problem will be how much land premium they need to pay in the next 12 months. So we still like Agile. Is, uh, if we look at June 2011, gearing is only about 70%. Uh, the good thing is they have already paid up all the land premium, so it's nothing overhand. So the plan sheet at that time is very clean and clear. Alfred, all very well and good. Last question to you, very quickly, when does it all go wrong? S sorry, can you say that? Well, when does it go bust? <laughs> the... When do we get a hard landing for the property sector, or do we not get one at all? Well, I, I think that's the hardest question for me, because uh, on. I, I think the first one will be the small, small developers because on the news we are already seeing some uh, developers like in, in, in Mongolia, they try to walk away from their projects. Mm. Uh, we may see more sizable uh, bankruptcy I think going towards uh, next year because when banks uh, re 
try not to renew their borrowing yeah, and, then the thing, they, and then property trusts are no longer valid option for them and then they maybe, uh, next year we are seeing an even softer market that they might not even sell properties even they cut prices so that will be the hardest time I think. Alfred thank you so much Alfred Lau there from uh, MF Global